the Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting for Tuesday, December 11th, year 2001. And the first uh, item on our agenda is the Pledge of, of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Uh, now taking a look at uh, adjustments to this evening's agenda. I'm not aware of any. And apparently there are none. Um, approval of the September school board minutes that were in your packet. I think it's November. Um, that's, uh, that's a good catch there, Jennifer. It was November. <laughs> Sorry about that. L last, last month was November. Right. Was it really up yeah. to Time flies. back in the fall? Sorry. We're already through November and into December. That's, I have my red tie on tonight. Um, comments by the... Um, so, uh, w were there any issues with those um, minutes other than the fact that on the agenda it says September? <laughs> the date on the minutes is correct. Uh, right. <laughs> they looked pretty good, right. Um, we're going to move right on to comments uh, by our high school uh, representatives. Chris and Dave. Uh, good evening. Uh, just stuff going on at the high school, uh, various things. Uh, a lot of extracurriculars have been actually going on recently. Um, mock trial, which we're actually going to go to right after this, uh, is, uh, is doing very well. Um, we are in the semifinals currently, and we've already beaten this team, so we'll probably advance. Um, and they're, mock trial is doing very well, just again. Uh, debate, uh, we had a debate meet this weekend, as well as a speech meet, and Cape Elizabeth did very well, as always. Um, and you know the team is in great shape and has great leadership and everything like that. Um, uh, sports seasons are in full swing. Uh, there's a basketball game going on right now, as everyone knows. Um, hockey is in full swing. Uh, track and <laughs> skiing still hasn't uh, gone head to head with anyone yet, but we're looking forward to our first meets. I know um, ski the ski team has their first meet, I believe, this Saturday. I know um, all the other teams have started, so. We're all real busy in the high school right now. So. Um, and just as far as the SAC is going, um, actually we're trying a new technique this year, and it's uh, actually breaking up into subcommittees. Uh, so that's proved very interesting. Um, we actually had our first meetings these past few weeks, um, and so far it's been very, very productive. Um, we've broken into the climate committee, uh, the uh, this academic committee, and uh, activities committee. Um, the chairman, uh, Dan Chevenel, is. Uh, the chairman of the academics committee. I'm the chairman of the climate committee, and and Addie Wintel is the chairman of the uh, activities. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I always about the you guys work well as a team. It's good. <laughs> Very good. I'm, you know, I'm just totally into the climate committee. But uh, <laughs> as far as the climate committee goes, uh, we uh, were talking about you know harassment and stuff like that. How we can deal with that? There's no major problems that I know of in the Department of Harassment, but we're just trying to clarify things. Uh, so it doesn't become an issue, or if it ever becomes an issue, it's uh, more easy to deal with. Um, also, uh, a number of our constituents uh, have brought to our attention uh, senior parking lot, uh, which has become a problem. Uh, right now we're drafting a letter that uh, talks about the various problems you should be receiving it uh, very soon, as soon as we get that approved by the council at large. Um, and basically the problem is, you know, it's overflow and, you know, we get ticketed and stuff like that. Um, but we'll be talking about this more. You'll, you'll hear about it uh, at some point later. It's not, a, not a new problem. Okay. <laughs> um, the academic committee is looking over things like the block scheduling. Um, one of the issues they're having is some people want to switch the schedule around a little for A period, and so A period is always first. Um, another thing um, the academic committee is going, going through or something else. Uh, just classes. Like yeah, just like new classes, new courses, stuff like that. Um, I'm on the activities committee. Um, we're, we're in charge of dances and things like that. Um, we're also trying to put together some stuff for the servicemen who are overseas, servicemen and service women. Um, that's basically our, our main things right now until anything, until something big comes along. So. Um, thank you very much. Hey, good job. Any uh, questions for Chris or for Dave? No questions, but a comment. Uh, I think some congratulations are in order for Dave, who I understand 
has multiple nominations to both West Point and Annapolis. So congratulations there. I know we have some other students who have some appointments. I think Dan Chavanel received a not appointments, but nominations. And I think there might be a few others floating out there that I, I may not know the names of the individuals, but congratulations, it's uh, quite a coup. Thank you very much. Hmm. Uh, no other questions, uh, thank you very much. Good job, thanks. Good teamwork there. Um, and now uh, Brianna and Lily for the uh, middle school. Okay. Okay, well this has been one of the uh, slower months for our school due to vacations and holidays, but we're still progressing nicely and in the 7th and 8th grade, uh, one of the upcoming events, it's a follow-up from Kiev, it's called the Respect Lottery, and what it is is if a teacher or staff member sees a student uh, doing a good deed or performing an act of kindness, they're awarded a ticket, and at the end of the lottery, tickets are put together in uh, like the winner's drawn, and also, the eighth grade is doing something around respect and kindness as well. And it's taking place in the advisories, and it's going to be around Martin Luther King Day where the students are going to try harder to be kind to their peers. Um, in the fifth grade, they just recently had a conference over the computer with the Bronx Zoo. And the fifth grade, along with our school, is very proud because we are the first school in the state to communicate this way with an out-of-state organization. Hmm. And um, also in the fifth grade, elections are coming up. And on behalf of the student council, we are excited to work with the new members. There was a lot of seventh and eighth grade dances and socials going on last Friday. We had a dance, and it was very successful. Also, we just held our annual fall band and chorus concert. And the students, along with Mr. White and Ms. Hansen, are very pleased with the students' extraordinary musical capabilities. You're really Okay, any questions? Did, did you say they're, um, they, they were going to try to be nicer to their peers or their parents? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. No. Um, I heard. Did you say peers? I think you said peers. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, other questions? Other serious questions? <laughs> okay, thanks. Good job. Okay. Very nice job. Um, we are uh, now going to move on to uh, communications. Um, I think you have in your packet a letter um, that was written to um, under communications to Gal Chapman just uh, talking about the approval capable of the school board of the, the past budget. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if Kevin has anything to say about that, but there was an interesting meeting that followed, and, and I guess they're, um, because of the tight budget, um, I don't think it will be as, as easy as it has in the past. Mm. Uh, the only thing I would add to that is Cal Chaplin sends her thanks to the entire board and everyone in Cape Elizabeth for the ongoing support. Uh, they are very appreciative of that. Okay. Um, comments from the public? I am seeing none, so I'm going to move on to um, recognition. Recently, um, <coughs> the Cape Elizabeth Middle School Physical Education Department was recognized um, by the governor um, for its outstanding achievement in the area of physical fitness. Andy Strout and I attended a ceremony uh, in Augusta in the governor's office where there were several school districts, I think there were four of us all together, that were recognized uh, for achievement uh, in the area of physical fitness. And the reason the middle school Cape Elizabeth was recognized was this is the fourth consecutive year um, that it scored as well as it did in each of those years 
uh, there was improvement. So we do have with us this evening uh, Sarah Jordan to accept this on behalf of the Physical Education Department. And I'd like to read uh, the certificate that's presented to the Physical Education Program at Cape Elizabeth Middle School. This certificate is presented by the Cape Elizabeth School Board in recognition of the outstanding achievement in the Presidential Physical Fitness Awards Program. I just want to quickly say that I feel very fortunate um, to have the opportunity to accept this on behalf of the students whose hard work and efforts are what actually brought this to us. Thanks. Okay. Um, superintendent's report, Tom. Now, there are a few items I'd just like to go over briefly. Um, a lot is happening um, within the school district, but these are just some of the highlights. Um, you, each, each month we do talk about the Education Foundation. Uh, Elaine and I both serve as advisors to this group. Um, they are, are continuing to make progress. They've established a strategic planning process, um, and their hope is that during the next few months they'll be able to establish some seed money and maybe um, uh, award some initial small grants um, to get the process going and the word out about the foundation. Um, right now they're talking about a capital campaign type program which will probably kick off in the fall of 2002. Future direction planning continues. Um, as you know at our last workshop, Sarah Simmons spent quite a bit of time talking about the curriculum work that is going on. Just one other thing I'd like to note, that there is a climate team that is an offshoot of the uh, climate and culture action team that worked last year. Um, one of the things that will be happening in the month of January is a survey uh, that all staff will be involved with, and in the, in the hope here is to establish a baseline um, that we can measure ourselves against each year. That's an important part of our future direction planning and all of our initiatives that um, um, we, we look at the results of what our work is and, and how we're improving. The hope is to begin with a parent survey. This will all be done on the, on the computer so that we can tabulate results um, and then, our, then the following year uh, to conduct parent and student surveys regarding uh, school climate. Also, just a notification, we do have, as of right now, a retirement that is in. Bruce Lynn, a teacher here for 33 years, uh, is intending to retire at the end of the, the present uh, school year. And as we usually do, Bruce, along with anyone else who submits a letter of retirement, will be recognized um, at the end of the school year in June by the school board. You also have in your packet a request for an extension of, of sick leave, Anine Burgess. Um, will be out for the remainder of the year, and I do have, in, in, we do have uh, documentation from her physician that, that she will not be able to return for the rest of this school year. Um, also, notification of maternity leave, and I have to look at this because we've had a few lately. Um, Claire Ramsbotham has officially uh, given us notice that she's planning to take a maternity leave as per the contract in beginning in April of 2002. School district newspaper on your um, agenda notes, it's called The Voice, but it's actually going to be called The View, um, will be distributed, our hope is, within the next week or so. <laughs> um, it's been, uh, I think it'll be a great paper, a lot of good articles, um, it's been a lot of work um, uh, putting it together, but it has a lot of good school news, um, and we're, we're going to deliver this to every household um, in the community. There will also be extra copies that will be made available either at the library, um, some here in this building, and in the schools. Our, there will be another issue, the second issue, that will come out in, in the spring of the year, but this first issue uh, is called The View from the Cape Elizabeth schools. And lastly, wanted to make you aware that we 
We'll be holding a, and I think we talked about this a, little, a bit at the workshop, um, and in our, our newspaper, The View, and in The Courier, there will be an invitation to all community members to a public forum um, that is called Creating Standards for, for Ethical and Responsible Behavior. Uh, public Law 1999, Chapter 35, which is the learning results legislation, um, speaks to the, an effort that each school board shall make in adopting a district-wide student code of conduct. To begin this process, we felt it was important to get the, the community involved, to get input from um, all segments of the, of, of the community. Uh, we'll also be looking to some of the parent groups, the staff, um, as we begin this process, not just in, in terms of what a, a code of conduct would be, but what we mean about ethical and responsible um, behaviors in our schools. That's it. Okay. We we'll move on to our principal's reports, and we'll start with the middle school, Nancy. Good evening. Uh, don't worry, I won't read this whole book to you. But um, to start off tonight, just to share a couple of things. I think many of you saw the Portland Press this morning and also heard our students report about Jill Bell's classroom and the video conferencing. And Governor King visited our school yesterday and participated in that activity as well. And just to share with you that that's a good example of your support coming to really then have a direct impact on student learning because Jill did a lot of work for that program during her sabbatical leave. And she actually has created a partnership, an informal partnership with us with the New York Institute of Technology and also with Verizon. And so all of this is now coming um, for us to see um, as impacting student learning with the video conferencing and um, working with the students. So, I know if she were here, she's in New York today um, at a meeting for that at the New York Institute of Technology, but if she were here, she'd want to be sure to thank you for your support for her to explore something she was interested in for teaching and learning. Also, for the past, in the same venue, for the past three budget seasons, um, we have come to you with a request for a textbook um, purchase uh, for our eighth grade program in Maine history. Um, it was a wonderful text that we first saw in a very draft form in the fall of 1998, and we were promised that textbook to be ready um, for September of 1999. Well, it arrived the other day, uh, just a little bit late, but it is a great book. It is here. Um, we thank you for sticking with us. Um, this will be used in our eighth grade. It's called Finding Katahdin, and it is a main history book. I, this is actually a book I have read cover to cover. Um, I don't stand here before you tonight because I read all textbooks that come into the middle school from cover to cover, but um, this one, I think, holds great promise for us in the future for our language arts and our social studies programs to integrate and do some things. And it's truly written in a different type of format with interviews, skits, plays, vignettes, and still a lot of main history in it. So thank you. It has finally arrived, and it was well, we think it was well worth the wait. We'll wait for the student poll on that later, but um, for right now, the adults who have looked at it, we feel that way. A couple of upcoming exciting things for our students um, that are coming ahead, and just to invite you, if any of you can be there on these days, you're more than welcome to join us. On January 24th, we will be holding our fourth career fair, and that's something that goes from 8 to 9.30, and students will be going to three different um, opportunities. That's for students in grades 7 and 8, and that will be at the middle school, and Gail Schmader helps us plan that each year. Uh, it's done very well, and we have a lot of community volunteers who come out and do presentations. And also, another date, March 8th, we are um, well underway with Ann Belden's parent committee um, planning our youth conference. We are actually going to have a name for this soon. We're going to, Ann's committee is going to work with, I believe, our eighth graders and come up with a name, but right now it's called an all-day youth conference, and um, Daniel Wathen will be our keynote speaker, and it will be for all of our students, five through eight, and it will be done entirely during the school day, but once again, doing some teaching and learning in a little bit different fashion. So if any of those dates are clear for you and you would like to stop by for any part of those activities, please know you're more than welcome. Recently, the seventh grade did complete their trip to Kiev. This was our fourth year at Kiev, and um, it was another successful year, and we picked up lots of things that we will continue, just as Brianna and Lily shared with you, some of the things we'll be carrying on as we move forward through the school year. Also wanted to share just briefly with you tonight a few of the activities that the teachers did on November 20th. I know that at your last workshop, Sarah Simmons went over 
the curriculum mapping activities that people worked on on the 19th. The 20th was a day that belonged to the building. And if you recall, in the middle school this year, everyone's written an individual plan, although some of those plans are done in teams and groups. Um, some people chose that day. They got really involved in the curriculum mapping, and it was an activity they just they wanted to, to do it and get it finished and um, work with it. And so they did that. Other people continued to work on their websites, and some of those you can see on our school webpage. You can, those addresses are there, and people um, who are watching tonight, as well as yourselves, can go to those. Our fifth grade um, took some time to finish up some plans on their integrated unit that they're going to be doing, and that's a unit on recycling that they're going to do January 2nd through the 4th. And we also had students, uh, teachers working with um, Gary Lenoy, and they finished up their iMovies. And I have seen three of the iMovies, and this is a software um, program that comes with our iMacs and our iBooks, which we anticipate having in the seventh grade if all goes well. And it's a way to show what you know. And um, once again, on our school webpage, some of these are posted. And Claire Ramsbotham's class, um, she did an iMovie on their solar energy unit for science. And the students have presented that the learning for people to see. And uh, Charlie Carroll's class um, did a presentation on, they did a unit on nutrition. So they have different things about that on their iMovie. And I've also seen Rachel Guthrie's iMovie. She did one on the guidance program. And just coming into the middle school is an iMovie that we feel might be very useful to new families and students who come into the middle school when students sometimes have just a question about what are the students that go to school here look like, what are the halls like, what's it like to move around in the hall. And then also Kim Sturgeon and Rick Madden are featured on that, telling some of the important things for students to know. Hayden Atwood continued with his group of um, teachers working on different research um, vehicles to use in the library and to extend their research um, from some of the popular sites that they go to at home, but just going to some more sophisticated sites um, to find some of the research that would support the learning that they have been assigned in the middle school. So people were busy on the 20th. They enjoyed the day and found it quite profitable. And now they're busy continuing learning. And as we've started our second trimester, and I know to the um, just pleasure of every middle school student, our report cards for the first trimester went home today. So I'm sure that was um, greeted with many smiles and applause. Thank you. Any questions for Nancy? Thank you. And I understand um, Tom is feeling under the weather. And we're going to move to the high school. Jeff. I had known that uh, Tom was going to be under the weather. I would have brought Michael Efron and <laughs> taken all kinds of time. <laughs> Um, but this week, I'm back, uh, this month, I'm, I'm back on my own, and so I'm going to give a report that actually builds on some of the things that Chris and David were talking about at the high school, um, because they're right that this has been a, a season of tremendous upswing in extracurricular activities. And one of the things I'd, I'd like to do from time to time with this time is to focus on some things that don't get as much public attention. Um, and on Saturday, as Chris and David mentioned, we hosted a speech and debate tournament at the high school. Um, but it wasn't just at the high school. There are so many schools and so many kids involved in this that it was at the high school, it was at the middle school, it was at Pond Cove School. Um, and at one point, because I was acting as a judge in the morning, I was sitting in the fourth grade chairs. It was really kind of a fun experience listening to the kids in, in, those, in those little chairs. Um, it's a huge tournament. Um, and I attended as a judge on Saturday morning, and I wanted to read to you the resolution that the Lincoln Douglas debaters, including Chris, I think, um, were assigned to argue, and the resolution was resolved, the right of developing countries to pursue their economic development takes priority over environmental concerns. Um, and there were some fascinating debates that, that came from that, and it's just, it's just a lot of fun to watch the kids sort of respond um, as well as they can on their feet and think on their feet. In policy debate, um, teams had to be prepared both to defend and attack a policy on uh, concerning weapons of mass destruction. Um, and especially the negative side of the policy debate has to respond very quickly to a policy that has no idea what, it's, what the policy is going to be, whether it's going to be about biological weapons or nuclear weapons or any kind of chemical weapons or anything. Um, I was very impressed by the dedication of all the young people from our high school and from others um, and elsewhere to give up an entire Saturday to this activity. 
um, I have been told, and I've never seen it that it's actually true, but I have been told by people who want to make a point that in poll after poll of the American people, the number two fear of most Americans is dying, and that the number one fear is speaking in public. Um, <laughs> that means that most people would rather die than speak in public. That's <laughs> something interesting. Yet these young people um, welcome the challenge to speak in public and to, and to grow in those skills. Um, they conquer their fears and they develop their ability to think on their feet, um, which is an ability that I wish I had developed when I was that age. <laughs> now, um, most people are not aware. I was not aware until I became a high school principal because I was not involved in debate as a high school student uh, that the longest competitive season of any activity in high school is not an athletic activity. It is speech and debate. It goes essentially from late October until April. 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 Um, I commend the dedication of the students who participate and our coaches, Jamie Gillette, Gretchen England, and Hannah Jones. And I have to read some names of kids who have gone for some particular things. Um, particular con congratulations to Kate First Place Policy winners Chris Bulis and Evan Michaels. In speech, the team of Wesley Preddy and Kelly Hugger uh, took third place for their performance of a scene from The Crucible. Melanie Burkhardt and Mike Palin took second place in duo for their rendition of a scene from Richard III. Emily Cole took first place in original works for a reading of her own short story composition. Caitlin Becker took second place in novice poetry, and Rania Campbell Cobb took first place in that competition. Amanda Gann took second place in dramatic interpretation, and Dan Geyer, one of our seniors, took first place in extemporaneous speaking. I didn't know what extemporaneous speaking was until a couple hours ago. Hannah Jones explained it to me. And evidently what Dan does, and he's the best in the state at what he does, um, it's a category in which the students are given a current events topic to speak about. They are give, then given 30 minutes uh, to prepare for a seven minute speech on that topic, complete with references to sources, whether it's encyclopedias or newspaper articles or magazines. So literally what Dan does is he has to go around and he is a constant magazine and paper clipper cutter. And he brings these comprehensive files of just about every imaginable topic from current events that he might be asked to speak on. It's absolutely incredible. Um, as Dan and Chris, so congratulations to all those folks. Uh, we have another performance-based comp competitive group, and David and Chris mentioned it, the mock trial group. Uh, it's reached the semifinal stage of the competition, um, which is scheduled for Thursday, if anybody is interested, from 1 to 5 at the, at the State District Court in Portland. Um, and my understanding is we're going up against Wayne Fleet, I believe. Um, a few other bulletins about some upcoming events. On Friday, we will be mailing home progress reports for students who are in danger of failing classes. There aren't too many. We are working towards creating greater consistency in the appearance and readability of these reports, trying to make them more user-friendly for parents, and hopefully we're moving in the right direction with those. Um, on Thursday, we'll be having the first in a series of round, school-wide roundtable discussions about the topic of building community in the high school. It's a continuation of a, of a format that was started last year on the topic of civility, and this year the, the, the hope is to create more specific, have come up with some more specific outcomes connected to what the SAC is doing, I think, in part with the issue of harassment. And on Monday evening, we will be showcasing our music and choral groups in their winter concert. Um, and I will say that Norm Richardson has been quoted in the newspaper saying that this is his last year with us. I don't know that that's official, but if it is true, uh, it would behoove all of us to come to appreciate the excellent work that he has done at Cape Elizabeth High School the past several years. And I will say that I hope it's not true. Um, and finally, I want to thank the board for its support of the professional development time, as, as Nancy did on the 20th. On the 20th. Um, our teachers made major progress on a lot of important curriculum work. Some is in the middle school continued some of the curriculum mapping work that had been done the day before. And we also held a series of workshops on technology issues, including web page design and PowerPoint. Um, and that's what I have. Beth, did you say only children you know, or students who might be failing will get progress support? Here, here is, yes, Not everyone. the answer is yes and no. Um, and I'm going to explain it in a letter that's going to go home to all parents about it, because we've had some discussions about, at a recent parent, parent association meeting, one of the questions came up for parents, from a parent standpoint, of when do I, what am I supposed to expect to get these things? And so what we decided is, and this is a tentative decision that can be a work in progress depending on people's reactions in part, 
is that the first quarter of each year when kids are transitioning into their new classes and they want to know how they're doing with their new teachers and the parents want to know how they're doing with the new teachers, that for the first quarter, every teacher will give a progress report to every student. Um, and that for quarters thereafter, students who are at risk of failing will be mailed home progress reports and other teachers will have the option of giving those progress reports to the kids. Um, and many of our teachers will choose to do that as they have in the past. So that's, that's where we are with progress reports right now. Other questions? Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. We're going to move on to our committee reports. Um, starting with Kevin, Finance Subcommittee. Most of this evening's meeting was spent on uh, reviewing the 2002-2003 capital improvement plan. Ernie McVeigh visited with us to explain that. I want to thank Ernie for his time and effort and uh, Pauline as well in getting this prepared for us. Uh, we have not reached the point in, in the budgets, uh, budget hearings where we will be uh, tearing this apart. I'm sure that we'll, uh, we'll be looking at this a little more closely in a month or two. Um, so that's, that's primarily it. Uh, and the rest was just our typical housekeeping of signing warrants and <clears throat> reviewing the appropriation report. Okay, thanks. Um, Jennifer, Policy Subcommittee. Um, policy Committee met last Wednesday, and uh, we did do some review of the athletic task force, but most of our time was spent uh, reviewing the special ed policies that are up for first and second reading tonight. Okay. And our next meeting is not until February, the first one in February. Yikes. We decided the first day back from school was not going to work after vacation. Um, administrators wouldn't be able to come. And we're not quite ready with our athletic task force stuff anyway. For that. Do you have a date in terms of the February date? Um, not on me. Okay. We're, we'll it's the first Wednesday in February. Okay. Good. Um, building committee, Marie. Okay. Um, since our last meeting, we have hired HKTA, um, an architectural firm, wh which they have already started their preliminary work um, in the high school specifically with um, Jeff. Um, having a lot of conversations about the work that needs to be done. Um, what we talked about at our last meeting and announced to our group is that we will not be going to referendum on either project, the high school project or um, the Pine Cove project. The state laws have changed within the last year and now what is, needing, what is needed is the approval um, of the town council to proceed with our project. Um, we hope to have plans finished within the next few months for both projects, um, you know, preliminary architectural plans. Um, we intend at this point to work very closely um, with the town council as things proceed um, and especially for the timing of both of these projects, which has not been set at this point. Um, our next meeting will be January 24th at 7 o'clock. Um, this will give um, Bob Howe and HKTA a little bit of time to put through um, the initial information for the group to go through. Okay. Good, thank you. Um, Unfinished business, these are um, policies that came up for a second reading last month. I think they were held off and, um, is that right? Yeah. And, um, and now they're being brought forward uh, this month for approval by the board. Um, you don't want me to read No, we don't want to read, you know, we don't want you to read them. I do. Um, <laughs> that can be sort of a... Um, Right, and it, an addendum to uh, this meeting here. And, okay. uh, but we've, we've had these uh, with us and, and reviewed them. And so um, maybe what we might do is entertain a motion 
and then uh, see if there are any questions or concerns. You want me to read what they are? Yes. Okay. Um, the policies up for second reading are IHBAB students, edu students educational records policy, IHBABR procedures for students educational records policy, IHBABA, which is notification of rights under FERPA. Okay. Um, and what we need is a, is a motion. <coughs> Kevin. I move that we adopt and publish the policies enumerated by the policy chair. Okay. And um, a second, Jim? Second. Um, questions or, or comments about these policies? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. We're going to now move on to new business, um, consideration of the superintendent's recommendations to a co-curricular fee position. We have one co-curricular fee position uh, that I'm recommending, <coughs> and that is in the area of debate, and that's Gretchen Anklin. Okay. And we need a motion. Jim? I would move that we approve the superintendent's recommendation of Gretchen Anklin as debate uh, coach. Okay. And a second. Elaine, thank you. Questions or comments about that recommendation? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. We're now going to move on to uh, the superintendent's recommendation to athletic fee positions for the winter. We have two positions at the middle school. Um, Sean Cregan, assistant Nordic coach, and Mike Miller, assistant Nordic coach. And at the high school, Drew Riddle, assistant ice hockey. Okay. We need a motion. Jennifer? I move we accept the superintendent's recommendations to athletic fee positions. That's good. Thank you. A second? Susan? Questions or comments on this recommend, these recommendations? Seeing none. All those in favor? 7-0. Um, in the packet, we have um, new uh, policies for uh, first reading. Um, Jennifer, is there anything that you want to say about these? Uh, before we see whether or not there's any questions or concerns? Not really. Is there anything you want to say about them, Claire? I think they're pretty straightforward. Okay. My question was, are these, um, are they, they're not new, they're just, these or, or are, are they these, new? These two are new. Okay. Because there were no, okay. Th those were the ones with no revisions on it, so I can see <coughs> this when they were new. Yeah. Um, and this is a standard package in terms of... Uh, these are also new to our... Policy. Correct. Okay. This is a policy that the state is mandating that we right. now have. Right. Okay. Um, um, so these were these are um, policies that then need to be uh, reviewed uh, by all of the board members uh, because uh, next month they will come back for a second reading. Right. And and they are JKGA timeout rooms and therapeutic restraint, and JKGAR timeout rooms and therapeutic therapeutic restraint procedures. Okay. Good. Um, another item of new business is uh, consideration of the proposed change to Article 15, Section 15.1, um, which has to do with health insurance of the collective bargaining agreement between the Cape Elizabeth School Board and the Cape Elizabeth Education Association, which is essentially the teachers. And um, what you have in this packet um, is a copy of um, article, the revision to Article 15 um, under other benefits, which specifies the costs um, that have been proposed by the bargaining committee um, and accepted by the association, um, and I believe needs uh, the final approval of the board. So what I'm looking for at this point is a motion. Jim? I would move that we uh, approve the change to Article 15, Section 15-1, as proposed uh, by the bargaining committee. Okay. And a second? Uh, Jennifer, um, comments, questions? I just have a comment, um, which is that um, it's, you know, it's critically important. This, the board um, has been uh, very much um, in agreement, not that we're in a lot of disagreement, lots of times, but, um, but it has been very much unanimous in the support of ensuring and getting behind and making real this goal of attracting and retaining the very best, best staff that we can. And, um, and I think that um, given the more recent track record, 
uh, I think we have been successful. And this uh, change uh, to the benefits, um, this was part of uh, what was negotiated. It was a, it's a re-opener um, in terms of, specifically in terms of benefit costs. That's uh, what the negotiations were limited to. Um, and the negotiating committee um, felt that this was um, appropriate and consistent um, with supporting that goal uh, to ensure that we stay competitive um, in the marketplace um, and that we're able to um, uh, to ensure that um, we are attracting and, and retaining uh, the very best uh, staff available um, to us. And I, so I'm pleased about it basically is my comment. Um, any other comments or questions? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. And um, the final piece of uh, business that we have uh, before I review the dates to remember is consideration of the re-election of the superintendent of schools. Um, this is a requirement that all, all um, uh, towns and districts have uh, in terms of um, either election or re-election of uh, the superintendent. And um, I don't know that we necessarily have a, f a formal motion to read, do we, Mary? We don't have a formal motion to read. We just need a, f a motion. A formal, uh, so what I'm looking for is um, a, a motion uh, by, the, by the board to re-elect um, Dr. Forsella as um, the superintendent of schools for the Cape Elizabeth School District. Got lots of hands up here. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Kevin. <laughs> I move that we re-elect uh, Dr. Thomas Vassello as superintendent of schools for the Cape Elizabeth School District, and I do so with pleasure. Okay. And we need a second. Susan, uh, comments or questions? It is. This is really a, a bit of a formality, but we always like to say nice things, and um, <laughs> just because we are a nice group, and we really like Tom, and um, we want to make sure it's also part of attracting and keeping the very best is um, making sure that we say nice things about our superintendent, <laughs> so that we keep him. So we're delighted to be able to do this, I'm, and I'm sure I speak for the board in saying that. Um, with that said, all those in favor, seven zero. Um, there are some dates to remember. Uh, the policy subcommittee meeting will be happening in February, and we'll sort of get more details on that. Um, first, what did you say, the first Wednesday? Wednesday. I think it's February 6th. Yeah, thank you. February 6th. That's just like too far away to think about. Um, there is a public forum that Tom talked about uh, for ethical and responsible behavior. That's Monday, January 7th. Uh, there'll be lots of... Um, publicity about that. It's at 7 p.m. and it's in the uh, cafetorium, the K through 8 cafetorium, and certainly everyone's encouraged to attend that. Finance Subcommittee will precede the regular January school board meeting on January 8th, 2002. Um, that will be at 6.30 p.m. in the William Jordan Conference Room, followed by our regular school board meeting um, at 7.30 p.m. in the council chambers. The building committee, as um, Marie said, will meet January 24th at 7 p.m., again in the William Jordan Conference Room. Um, with that said, I believe um, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn, adjourn our public session. We are not going into um, executive session, so this will end our business for this evening. I think we'd like to sit here a while. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's almost... <laughs> <laughs> I was getting a sort of a sense that everybody just wanted to linger and chat a bit more. Um, could I get a motion from someone? Kevin, thank you. Uh, first, I'll wish everyone a happy holiday season and move that we adjourn for the evening. Until next time. And second, Marie. Thank you. Comments or questions? Anyone else want to sort of prolong this a bit? <laughs> Seeing none, none. Um, all those in favor? 7-0. No, that Thank was 6-1. I want to six, six, for a while. 6-1. <laughs> Mary, did you get that? Yeah, a while. All those against? <laughs> one of Thank six. you very much. Have a good evening. Thanks.